Innovation matters because if companies want to stay competitive, they cannot simply copy what other companies have done so far. They need to come up with new ideas. Only then, when they develop new products, come up with new technologies, better ways of manufacturing, then they will appeal to their customers and they will stay competitive and they will create employment. So the question we're really after here is, how do patents affect innovation? You might expect that they help innovation for the companies that want to protect their technologies that they invented. But at the same time, these patents may prevent other companies from building on this existing technology and developing their own new products. And so for the society as a whole, it may be important uh, to make sure that patents don't restrict the use of these uh, technologies in new products. Now, to what extent these patents really prevent innovation, we simply do not know. But it's an important question to find out whether compulsory licensing, for instance, would be a remedy that would foster this cumulative innovation. Compulsory licensing would force the original innovators to allow other companies to build on their technology, which then would help develop new products. In order to answer this question, we look at one of the most innovative companies of the world, Bell Labs. Bell Labs uh, made such path-breaking inventions like the transistor, the laser, the solar cell, the um, mobile phone technology. Now, in 1949, the Bell system was charged with an antitrust suit because in communication they held a dominant market share of 85%. Now, in the end, this antitrust suit was settled with a consent decree. And as a result of this settlement, um, in 1956, Bell Labs was forced to license all its existing patents for free. And we now make use of this compulsory licensing in order to find out how this affected follow-on innovation in the US. We find that compulsory licensing does increase innovation. And in particular so for small startups, not so much for large companies. So in the end, these small startups increase their innovation by 30%. Another part of this antitrust ruling was that Bell had to leave all the business areas other than communications. Business areas where Bell so far had lots of patents. Now we find that the compulsory licensing was only effective in all these fields that Bell had to leave, which means that it's an effective way of fostering innovation, but not if there's a dominant player like Bell still around. So some have argued that compulsory licensing of Google's intellectual property rights could be an effective policy to foster follow-on innovation, just as it was in the Microsoft case. Now the lesson from the Bell case from the 50s is that compulsory licensing can indeed be such an effective policy and that could work for Google as well. What we also saw in the Bell case, however, is it only worked in those areas where Bell was not a dominant player anymore.